Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, coming to you from Washington's premier indoor shooting facility. Of course, that is Security Gun Club right here in Woodenville, Washington. This is going to be a much different type of video than what we normally do here at Washington Gun Law. Normally, we're just telling you how you're either getting punched in the mouth or need in the groin. Instead, today, we're going to talk about an issue because there seems to be a huge, huge influx of new gun owners or potential new gun owners. There appears to be a lot of people who are suddenly coming to the realization that they might have to purchase their first firearm. I wonder why. Well, it's probably because when you look out the window, you see that our entire country is going to hell in a handbasket. I mean, you might belong to an ethnic or religious group right now where you're actually seeing protests on what is supposed to be our nation's premier universities where they're calling for your outright genocide. You may live in a community where a local government has managed to defund your police, turn your prosecutor's office in jail into a revolving door of releases, all all while passing laws to disarm you, the lawful and responsible gun owner. You may have just had enough and you may have finally come to that realization that, you know what, government is not there to protect you. The only people capable of protecting you and your family is in fact yourself. And that concern has a lot of you wanting to do something about it. So today we're not gonna tell you how to think, but we are gonna give you all the stuff to think about. So let's today talk about how to arm yourself right now, legally. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit of a legal roadmap for those of you who are actually thinking about finally enjoying your Second Amendment rights and protecting yourself and your family. Now, to my normal viewers, this video is probably not going to help you a whole lot because all of you are, in fact, already lawful and responsible gun owners. But you all got family members, you all got friends, you all got people who are thinking about it. Please help us out and get this video circulated to them. We're going to stick to our true mission here at Washington Gun Law. We're not going to tell them how to think, but we are going to give them all the stuff to think about. Now, some caveats for those of you checking this channel out for the first time. Occasionally, we do have to put some caveats. I am going to give you some general advice. Please understand that local laws, both on a state level and in some states on a much more localized level, are different, are unique, and can create legal issues if you are not aware of them. Therefore, I recommend that everybody also consult with local counsel if they have any questions as it pertains to state laws or other local municipal or otherwise county regulations that you may have to deal with. The next caveat, I am not giving any tactical advice. I am not giving any firearm advice. I am giving you some legal information. There are plenty of other people out here in the youtube -iverse that will tell you what kind of gun you should be buying or how you should be shooting the gun or what kind of training you should be doing. I will leave it up to the people who claim to be experts in that field and stick only to the legal consequences of becoming a first-time gun owner. Okay, one piece of advice that I would give anyone is, is when it comes to selecting your first firearm, you will get lots of advice from lots of people for lots of reasons. And the best piece of advice I could give you is, don't listen to any of their advice. Actually, just go ahead and find yourself a good, reputable gun club. Hey, like Security Gun Club right here in Woodenville, Washington. You know, honestly, they have just about everything in their rental counter that you can try for yourself. And if you're completely unfamiliar, Go ahead and take a basic handgun safety class, learn the proper operation, or hire an instructor for an hour so that you can try various different firearms and figure out what feels best for you. Ladies, this is really important because shockingly, men will like to mansplain how you should get involved into firearms. Well, again, I'm gonna give you a piece of advice, which is don't listen to their advice. Instead, you explore firearms in the manner that makes you most comfortable and you find the firearm that you believe is the best fit for you. Now, let's talk about licensing. Believe it or not, even though our Second Amendment is said to be a right, there are some states that actually require you to get permission that is a hall pass before you could actually exercise what is supposed to be an inalienable right. Now, understand that there is no federal law that requires an individual to have a license in order to possess or own a firearm. These laws are subjected to us by our state or local governments. Licensing in order to own or possess a firearm really comes in one of four forms. One, permits to purchase. 
two, license to owns, three, safety certificates, four, actual registration. Now, the list that I'm about to show you is a list of jurisdictions that do have some type of licensing requirement in order to purchase a firearm or to own a firearm. This has nothing to do with concealed carry. This is actually just to own or purchase. Now, again, I will put the links for all of the information down below because I want you carefully to pay attention to some of the details because those licenses in some states are only required for certain platforms of firearms but states that have some type of pre-purchasing licensing requirement include California, Connecticut, the District of Columbia, Hawaii, Illinois, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, Nebraska, New Jersey, New York, Oregon, Rhode Island, and Washington. And I should point out that in Washington, that was a safety certificate in order to purchase a semi-automatic rifle, but then we banned those this past legislative session, so that really is no longer good law. Now, understand that in some of these jurisdictions, there may be mandatory safety training and firearm training required before you can obtain that license. In other jurisdictions, it's simply as easy as passing a background check and establishing that you are otherwise eligible to be in possession of a firearm. Now, that's a good segue to another question that people have, which is what sort of mandatory training, that is, what sort of training must I complete before I can lawfully own or possess a firearm? Interestingly enough, most states do not have any mandatory training necessary in order to you, for you to purchase or own your first firearm. Now, we preach here at Washington Gun Law all the time that we're the home of the lawful and responsible gun owner, and that means that there is no such thing as too much training. If you are in fact just getting into firearms, we highly, highly recommend you take basics, handgun safety courses, as well as safety courses and basic courses in handguns or any other platform of firearm that you may be exposing yourself to. Currently, there is only a handful of states that actually have mandatory firearm training requirements before you can obtain a license to then own a firearm. Yes, this is the state of the United States of America in the year 2023 in some states. Those states include California, Connecticut, Hawaii, Maryland, Massachusetts, New Jersey, Oregon, and Rhode Island. And for folks here in the hometown crowd, Washington State, effective January 1st of 2025, we will have a safety course required as well if House Bill 1143 actually holds up to its constitutional challenges. And of course, we have to talk about waiting periods. What the heck is a waiting period? Well, a waiting period is a period of time in which you must wait even after all the paperwork is cleared before you can actually take possession of your firearm. Yeah, these cooling off periods are supposedly going to stop crime. Now, many of you who are just now getting into your Second Amendment rights may have voted for legislation in the past which created these waiting periods because you were under the belief like, who would ever need a gun right away? Hmm, imagine if you were a Jewish American right now. Now there are several states which have statutory waiting periods and those waiting periods will be defined by statute and have a certain length and could depend on the type of platform that you are actually purchasing. The states which have mandatory waiting periods right now include California, Colorado, Florida, Hawaii, Illinois, Maryland, Minnesota, New Jersey, Rhode Island, Vermont, and Washington. So understand, even if you have a real dire need to be armed right now, if you are in a state with a statutory waiting period, you will have to wait that period out before you can take possession of the firearm. And finally, let's talk about concealed carry because once you obtain your first firearm and you get properly trained, you very well may want to carry it with you. Listen, the truth of the matter is, as a criminal defense attorney now for 23 years, uh, the truth of the matter is most people do not come into armed conflict in their home. It happens, but not very often. Where armed conflict usually occurs is out on the roadway or other places in public. And so therefore I have encouraged everybody to obtain a concealed pistol license. So in the event you choose to carry, you will have the ability to do so. In Washington state, for example, you cannot even carry the firearm loaded in your automobile unless you are in possession of a valid concealed pistol license. 
Now, just because you get a license for concealed carry, I'm not telling you that you should carry every day. There are many people who will tell you that, and I do have a tendency to agree with that, but that's an individual choice that you must make based upon your comfort level. Now, there used to be some states that were called may carry states, which means that you would actually have to demonstrate not only that you were allowed to possess a firearm, but that you were the right kind of person to be carrying a firearm around. Now, that standard was chucked out on its ass last summer in the matter of New York Pistol and Rifle Association v. Bruin. And so most states now are operating under what's called a shall issue regime, similar to what we do here in Washington State, which is so long as you are otherwise lawfully allowed to possess a firearm, you will get a concealed carry license. Now, again, some states will have certain training requirements in order to get that concealed carry license. Other states only require that the person be otherwise lawfully allowed to possess a firearm. You need to check with your local jurisdiction to find out what's required in your state. And then in addition to that, let's talk about constitutional carry or what sometimes is called permitless carry. This is a trend which has really taken off in the last 10 years or so throughout the United States. It's done predominantly in conservative states, states that also in their state constitution don't have language suggesting that the state has all sorts of authority to regulate the carrying of firearms. The way constitutional or permitless carry works is, is that if an individual is in that state who is otherwise lawfully allowed to possess a firearm, then they are lawfully allowed to carry that firearm consistent with state law. Currently, 27 states in the United States are either permitless or constitutional carry, and they include Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, Idaho, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Maine, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, New Hampshire, North Dakota, Ohio, Oklahoma, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, Vermont, West Virginia, and Wyoming. And again, I do need you to check with local jurisdictions because a couple of those states have some exceptions to that and you need to be aware of it. Now, the other piece of advice I want to give everyone as it relates to training is that I said that there is no such thing as too much training. I mean that. So you should get as much trigger time as humanly possible. You should get as much tactical training as you can possibly do. But here's the thing that a lot of people forget to do. You see, people go to the range every week and they run hundreds and hundreds of rounds downrange every week so that they'll stay out of the morgue. But where do you go to train in order to make sure that you stay out of prison? You see, being a lawful, everyday concealed carrier, if that's what you decide to do, turns life from a game of checkers into a game of chess. You will have to consider that for every action there is an equal and oftentimes more detrimental chain reaction. You must become mindful and thoughtful and empathetic in all of your moves. And so in addition to all of the training that you should be doing at the range, with the trainers there, you should at least on an annual basis take some legal training in your local jurisdiction so you understand what the state of the self-defense laws are, what the use of force standards are, and certainly if there's been any changes due to your legislation. Listen, I want to leave all of you who are thinking about getting into firearms or have actually already taken the plunge, I want to leave you with a couple of food for thoughts here. First of all, I want you to ask yourself this question. Are you and your family safer today than you were, say, three or four years ago? Because I know what the answer is. Are you living in a community where local politicians seem to work overtime to defund the police, to turn your criminal justice system into a revolving door of catch and release, all while working feverishly to disarm you, the lawful and responsible gun owner? Do you live in a community now where if you know you call 911, you will be lucky if anyone ever comes? Well, guess what? You're not alone. There's a lot of people in this country that are thinking that way and they finally have had enough. And even though the media has told you for years and mainstream liberal politicians have told you for years that you do not need a firearm when the collective crap hits the fan, it appears that Americans realize that they and they alone are responsible for their and their family's safety. Listen, I'm not telling you how to think, but I am giving you all the things to think about. I hope this video at least gets you to consider the value of your life, the value of your family lives, and the fact that only you can truly protect that. Listen, if you got any more questions about this, 
or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights. You guys should know how to get a hold of Washington Gun Law by now. If you don't, that's okay. That information is right down there in the description box. Now, in the meantime, let's everyone remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation, how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.